And we are live. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, 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 welcome. Great morning, grand morning to everybody. Come on in. Come on in. It's the Virtual Assistant Principal Leadership Academy. We're in week number 41. Unbelievable. Come on in. Come on in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Michael, Priscilla, good morning. Grand Rising, Great Rising, Demetrius, Janine, good morning. TB Summers, good morning. Teacher Sandra, good morning. Ingrid, good morning. Monique, good morning. We got a lot of people in the building. Byrie Collins is in the building. Verlanda is in the building. Principal Kitchen is in the building. Uh, Hortensia is in the building. Principal Jackson's here. Michael Benton is here. Dr. Tiffany Wilson is in the building. Lawanda, Canella, Tega, Kathy is, are in the building. My wife, Kimberly Broughton Cafele, is in the building. Although I live in a house. We're in the building. Tiana's in the building. Katina's in the building. Kai and Raquel, and the names are blazing. Kevin's in the building. John Herricks is in the building. Aisha, Kiana, Lakeisha, Superintendent Finch is in the building. Ohio Girl Jones is in the building. Lily Lanier is in the building. Man, we got a lot of people in the building. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Krista, uh, I missed the last name, but Scott Robert is in the building. Jeff, Paula, Hortensia, Millie, Felicia D. Gaines is, are in the building. Hit that share button, somebody. Let them know it's that time. It's that time that we get it rocking and rolling. I got so much to talk about today. I got to spill it into another week. Alicia Worthy's in the building. Tamara's in the building. Suki is in the building. Ana uh, Anna Cedar is in the building. We got a lot of folks here in the building. We got a lot to talk about too. Hit that share button, hit that retweet button. Let them know that we are here for week 41 as I'm sending out a quick text message. Just keep it coming, keep it coming. Let them know we are here. Todd Felton's in the building. Will Turner, KB, Rodney Staley, Maurice Foster, Principal Dot McKeever, Jeter's in the building. I know I missed a lot of names. I can't catch them all. This, this, this thing is flying. Miss Catchings, uh, Miss Catching is in the building. Wonder if that's my former student. I can't make out the uh, the fit the picture, right? But good morning to you from East Orange, New Jersey, my hometown. Uh, Rodney Richards is in the building. Let me just send off this quick text. Um, in the building, let's go, let's go. Well, we got two more minutes. Siobhan is in the building. Tehran is in the building. There we go, text say. Who else do we have here? Hit that share button, somebody. Let them know. We getting ready to get heavy today. Let them know. Getting ready to get a little uncomfortable today. Getting heavy, getting uncomfortable. We got um, we got uh, who we got Tracy Johnson in the building. Bethany Hill is in the building all the way out in Arkansas. Good to see you. Lewis Saunders is in the building. My old colleague in here in Jersey, Lavelle Johnson, Jennifer Desmond. I think she's up in Canada. We got people. We, we got an international audience. We got a national audience. Uh, Donna Shara Gantz in the building. Melissa White's in the building. Hit that share button, somebody. Hit that retweet button, somebody. Let them know. We go on, we go on 41 straight weeks. This is week number 41. We're going all the way to 55. Then I'm going to just slightly adjust the format because we're not going to end it. It's just that I got a new book coming out in May. You know, we take this to May, then I got the new book coming out. So I got to incorporate that as well. But, you know, we'll talk about that later. Right. But while you're coming on, Cynthia Farmer's in the building. Jeremy Perkins is in the building while you're coming on. Uh, now nah, it's 11 o'clock. So I'll save that for a later announcement as well. It's just about that time, folks. Again, hit that share button, hit that retweet button. We're talking about school leadership. We're talking about school leadership in the context of Black History, Black History Month. I'll explain the parentheses around month in a little while. But also, 
we're talking about black history in the context of the assistant principal. I said last night we were going to be in the context of the AP. And then this morning I woke up and said, but it's a lot of it's a lot of folks in principal leadership on this thing, too. So let me just say school leadership. So with that said, it is 11 o'clock in the morning on February 6th. So let me say to you formally, good morning. Greetings. Welcome to the virtual assistant principal leadership academy week number 41 and you see i'm excited but i will say this i don't know about you but i'm beyond excited i'm on fire y'all didn't hear me you didn't hear me let me repeat myself i said i'm on fire this morning I woke up on fire. I planned to sleep till about 8.30, get a little extra rest today. I was up by 6.30, man. I was on fire, taking the picture with the jersey on, as you many of you saw on Facebook, getting ready for today's session. I'm on fire, but I'm asking you, are you on fire? Do you share the fire despite the challenges, the obstacles, the pressures, the demands of the world, of life, of living? Are you able to maintain your fire? See, ain't nobody going to extinguish my fire. You know, I, it's, it's rough out here right now, but the fire is going to rage because I got work to do. The fire has got to rage because you got work to do. Right. So let me give you this real quick. I got this. I got this quick message for you. Right. The message today. Those of you who are new to me, we always start with a quick message and a word of the day. So the quick message for you today is protecting your optimism. Once again, protecting your optimism. Look here. You didn't enter leadership or those of you who are aspiring. You didn't you don't aspire to lead because you think it's going to be a pessimistic journey. That's not your inspiration. That's not your motivation. That's not the impetus. You went into this thing because you had this optimism that once you get in, you're going to be a game changer. You had this optimism that once you get the position, life's going to change for a lot of people within a school, the children, the staff, the parents, the community. You had this optimism, right? You had this, 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 this hope. You had this belief. You had this confidence, right? This optimism that what this school needs is me. Now, that's not to sound egotistical, cocky, anything of that nature. It's just real that your mindset, it had to have been, or else why did you enter in the first place? So the mindset was that we that once they give me a position, once they appoint me, once they hire me, we're getting ready to elevate. So I'm saying that that optimism that you had you have to still have, but in order to continue to have it, you have got to protect it. You got to shield it. You got to guard it, right? So protect your optimism. Don't let negative people come into your space and sap you of your optimism. Don't let negative situations and events come into your space and sap you and undermine your optimism. You've got to sustain that. You've got to maintain that. You've got to perpetuate that. Your optimism, it doesn't belong to anybody else in the world but you. It's yours. You got to own it. You got to claim it. You got to embrace it. You got to guard it. You got to protect it. You got to shield it. We're talking about your optimism, right? So with that said, let me go quickly to my word of the week, word of the day, word of the week, since we come on once a week. That word today is audacity. Once again, audacity. And I'm saying to you, you've got to have the audacity to be phenomenal. You've got to have the audacity to be amazing. You've got to have the audacity to be extraordinary. See, 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 I'm talking about this boldness. You got you, you got to have that. You got to possess that. This boldness to take you to another level. You got to have the temerity. You got to have the audacity to lead at a high level. You got to have the audacity to go against the grain. You got to have the audacity to, to, to implement your new idea, the audacity to come with the unthinkable, the, the impossible, right? You, you got to have the audacity 
to take it to a level that nobody has ever concept conceptualized before. That you got to be bold. You got to you you got to be audacious in this journey called leadership. I hope y'all hear me. We okay. Let's 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 go real quick. You know, I gotta I gotta tell y'all these man. You got to get this. If you don't have the assistant principal 50 and you've been coming on this this broadcast all this time, I see my daughter popped in there. There you go. Cabria Jesse is in the building. So you don't have this yet. You got to have this. This accompanies the whole the whole academy. But but you got to have this. The aspiring principal 50 and the assistant principal 50. Right. So you're an assistant principal. You aspire to become. One, or you, you're a principal and you have an assistant, I wrote this for you. You want to become a, a principal? You want to become an assistant principal? Or you're a new principal? I wrote this for you because this is not just for the aspiring. You see in the subtitle, it says new and future school leaders. Get them both. Amazon, ASCD.org, BarnesandNoble.com, PrincipalCafele.com, right? That's that. Next um where we at here subscribe to my uh youtube channel virtual ap leadership academy hit the subscribe button you know we got almost eleven thousand now but i, I want twenty thousand, right so subscribe to that and then like and follow my facebook page called virtual ap leadership academy because i leave y'all a powerful message every sunday morning so make sure that you you subscribe to that i write things that i don't necessarily have in this broadcast so make sure you subscribe to that. That's it with my announcements. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get uncomfortable now, right? I'm wearing my Baltimore black socks. You can't see the bottom, but there we go. Baltimore black socks, Negro League jersey. You know, it's Negro Leagues every week. That's that's what it's going to be. This is what I wear. I got a closet full of them. I don't even want to tell you how much I paid for them, but we got them, right? I'm celebrating these great, 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 phenomenal black baseball players that were not permitted into the major leagues because they were born black, but had talent, some of them that we have never seen before, right? From a human being. But because they were born black, we're not allowed to play. So they had their own leagues, the Negro Leagues. I'm representing the Baltimore Black Sox this morning. Let's go, y'all. It's Black History Month, right? That's my theme today. You need to call somebody, right? You need to, you need to share. I'm done with my announcements now. We're getting ready to go in. You need to call somebody. You need to you you need to you need to type somebody, text somebody. I said type. You need to text somebody, right? You need to share this. You need to retweet this. You need to tell them we getting ready to go in on this history thing, right? We getting ready to talk about Black history in relationship to school leadership. I got seven pages of notes. I can't do it in one day. We're gonna do this in part one and two, and hopefully I don't have to spill into part three. But I got a lot here. Right, because I got a lot I want to talk about. So let's 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 start it off with a question. I got I got seven questions I want to start with, but this is not one of them. This is just me free kind of freestyling, and then I'll get to my questions in a minute. And and so, but you can write this Kim Wilson Daniels out there taking notes. You'll find them on on her face Twitter page Kim Wilson at Kim Wilson Daniel or her Facebook page at Kimberly Wilson Daniel with a L Y. Right. This is this is just me. I'm freestyling right now, and I'm asking you. In terms of black history, forget the month. Let's look at black history in general. <clears throat> Is it an inherent part of your school, right? Do you have black students in your school? And has black history been infused interdisciplinary in your curriculum, right? So, so it's part of math, science, language, arts, social studies, PE, health, uh, foreign language, CTE, whatever, whatever it is you offer. Is black history a part of the reality? That's what I'm asking you. This is not part of my questions yet. I'm freestyling, right? Is this is this is this part of what you do at your school? <clears throat> Particularly if you have black students, right? So so now you have black students in the school in the name of being culturally relevant to those students that they're that they're given the the, the opportunity to see themselves in the learning through a historical lens. I'm I'm just asking you, is that a part of what you do at your school? Man, I was yelling so loud in the first few minutes, I feel like I'm gonna lose my voice. 
that's not good because I got an hour to go, right? So <clears throat> work with me. Matter of fact, my son is right here. Give me them cough drops. Stop, knock on the door and give, give me that bag of cough drops by my bed, man. I, I got too loud, y'all. <laughs> man. So, so, so here's the thing. I, here, so I want you to keep that question in mind <clears throat> as I proceed, right? So, so, so question one. And we, man, we got so much to talk about. Here's my first question. Who was Carter G. Woodson? Right. Who was Carter G. Woodson? Now, my my task, this is a virtual assistant principal leadership academy. And I want to maintain a balance of that. I want I don't want to compromise the integrity of <clears throat> of what this is. But I want to talk history at the same time. So I want you to kind of just ride with me as I try to strike this balance between the two. So I'm asking you. Who was Carter, Dr. Carter G. Woodson, right? Because I tell teachers, thank you. I tell teachers all the time, you cannot talk about black history, whether it be during the month or just throughout the year. But you can't, let's, matter of fact, let me tie this, this response into the month. You cannot talk about black history. I got to preserve the voice now. You cannot talk about black history month without talking about Dr. Carter G. Woodson, right? That's like getting in a car that has no gas in it and you expect to drive it. It's not gonna happen. It's not even gonna start. It's empty. I'm saying your, his, your, your lessons, your theme of black history during February, Black History Month, without not only the mention of, but the study of, Dr. Carter G. Woodson, the, the, lacking him, is like driving that car with no gas. Your lesson is lacking substance because you haven't given credit or deference to the person that conceptualized it in the first place. So I'm saying to you, you have got to, you have got to make sure that you introduce your students. Here you are, you're the leader. So in, in, in you facilitating, providing the professional development for staff or being a part of it, one of the things you want to have a conversation with staff about is the fact that we want to make sure that we highlight Dr. Carter G. Woodson, who was the second African-American to graduate from Harvard University with a PhD. <clears throat> When I start yelling next week, somebody right on the thread say, bring it down just slightly because I'm struggling right now. <laughs> no soreness. Just it's like I'm, it's like I feel like I'm on the verge of laryngitis. Right. So I'm saying to you. Second African-American to graduate from Harvard University with a Ph.D. behind W.E.B. Du Bois. Right. He was an author of 16 books. He was a professor and dean at Howard University. He was a he was a publisher of his own company, study for the for, for a life of I mean, an association for life and study of, Af of, of, of of Negro history. And, and I know I, I know I screwed my words up because I'm Russian and, and, and so many other accolades. But in February, we tend to look at him. More so for Black History Month, which is rooted in Negro History Week. So leader out there, I'm saying to you, under your leadership, regardless of your title, assistant, principal, whatever it is, is there discussion in your school that talks about the fact that Negro History Week was created by Carter G. Woodson and then going beyond that in terms of the reason why? Because here we had a situation in, in, in Kelly Vinson, I see you there. Let all them folks in St. Louis that were, that were hitting me up on the thread last week, the other night, let them know I'm on live right now. They wanted to know about videos and so forth. So let them know you can catch me live right now. Right. So here he knew that the African-American had a profound history. Whether it be from 26, from 1926 on back to 1619 or beyond in terms of Africa. He knew 
that the African-American had a profound history. So he said, let me create a we, because I want, I want to dispel some myths with this too. He said, let me create a week where we just highlight African-American history, right? Where, where we, when, when I say highlight it, I mean the reading of it, the study of it, the research of it, the teaching of it, the learning of it, and even the celebration of it. So, so just going in deep, dissecting this history, it also, and, and I might even add, and disseminating African American history, Black history. So it was this week that he decided, which was the second week of of uh, February, and he and he chose that week because he could have chosen any week in the year, but he chose that week because he wanted to commemorate two birth dates. Number one. Frederick Douglass, who was born the second week of February, but but records were not kept of the enslaved in terms of exact dates of birth. So he didn't know the exact date, but he knew it was around the second week. <clears throat> but then on top of that, Abraham Lincoln was born the second week of February. So he said, I want to do it. I want to I want to create this 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 thing called Negro History Week around the second week of February to commemorate those two lives but then as i said before to study to learn to read to to write to teach to discuss to to research to celebrate african american history right so <clears throat> here's the myth that needs to be dispelled or, or or just the notion that's a better word notion in the 60s it evolves into black history month to coincide with the civil rights slash black power movement Right. So now. It became known as Black History Month and to this day in 2021, because I see it on online all the time, I'll hear people say, why is it the shortest month of the year? Right. And every time I hear that, I, I cringe, even though I used to say it years ago and I didn't know better. People say, why is it the shortest month of the year? Think about it. It's 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 a week that evolved into a month and you gotta you, you gotta maintain focus on the fact of, of why it was that week so he wasn't going to remove it from the month that he started it in relative to the week and put it in a long month say say march for example with 31 days because it has historical significance in terms of why he created it as a week in february right so I want you to keep that in mind as we as as we talk about as as we talk about um the the origins of it, right? So that's why it's in the shortest month of the year. But here's the thing. <clears throat> that's a beautiful thing that it's in any month because we're not going to confine it to any month. It's a lifelong study. It's not a it's, it's 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 not a month study. It's not a week study, but it's a lifelong study. But again, uh, this is the virtual AP Leadership Academy, and we're and we're using Black History as the as the, the topic today because because we're in the midst of Black History Month. So I, so I want to stay consistent with that and ask you the question. Therefore, leader watching me this morning, aspiring leader watching me this morning, whatever your capacity of leadership from AP all the way to superintendent and board members, is what I just shared a part of what you do? Is what I just shared a part of your reality in your school? That, that little smidgen that I just shared with you, is that a part of your reality in your school? And if it's not, then my question is, why not? That's my question. Why isn't it? It needs to be. I didn't even get deep and heavy. I just said that the founder of African American History Month, Black History Month, Negro History Week in 1926 needs to be a part of the discussion. The kindergartner needs to know. The first grader, the fifth grader, the eighth grader, the, 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 the sophomore, all the way to the senior needs to be aware of this man. But let's go further. Many of you on this call, you you know my story. You 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 know you know what got me into education. So now, 
let's let's go into a little bit about what Dr. Woodson wrote. Dr. Carter G. Woodson wrote 16 books. That's that's a lot. You know, I, I keep it quiet, but I guess it's the first time I'm making it public. I've, I've my 12th book comes out in May. I'm shooting for 16 because I want to at least be where he was because he's one of my my, my biggest literary heroes, if, if 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 not the literary hero of mine. So I said I gotta at least write as many as he wrote. They won't be as good as what he wrote, but but at least write as many because I can't I can't match him. Ain't no way in the world I ain't even gonna pretend, right? But this book. This is the one that everybody gravitates to. There are others, but this is the one that everybody gravitates to because it hasn't lost its, its historical relevance. I don't think any of them have. They're not all available, but, but this one, folks, I don't care who you are watching right now, what your, what, what your race, ethnicity, nationality, culture, I, I don't care. I'm gonna say to you, if you've got one black student in your class, in your school, or if you have zero black students, you need to add this to your repertoire. You need to add this to your library. Now, it's not going to look like this one. This is old and it's beat up. The miseducation of the Negro. You got to add this one to your library. The miseducation of the Negro. Man, I mean, you, you think about undergraduate school, you know, or graduate school, but in this case, undergrad go through pre-service teaching in undergrad school and in most cases in that in that pre-service program that that teacher preparation program we're not exposed to this kind of material yeah we get piaget and we get some of the, the popular white scholars and researchers in, in the area of education but but are we getting carter g woodson and those of you that, that, that keep up with me on social media, those names that I give you, those books that I share every week, not just during Black History Month, but but for the for the past half a year, my books of the week for educators of Black children, those those should be staples in 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 um in pre service programs, because if we're talking about preparing a teacher to be toward being effective with black children that we need black educators who have who have done the research and have, and have transferred it to the writing of books for pre-service teachers and 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 um aspiring leaders but this is this is a historical book the miseducation of the negro i'm only an educator today because of this one book i'm only sitting here before you today because of this one book I, I started reading this book. What's the date I wrote in here? I wrote. I got this book in 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 nineteen eighty six, and I read. I, I started reading the introduction. You know the pages with the Roman numerals, right? And I see this paragraph. It blew my mind. I want you to. I want you to hear me on this. I just had it up in print, and I, I lost it. My my man, Principal Kitchen down in Tampa, had it up. He said, "When you control a man's thinking." You do not have to worry about his actions. You do not have to tell him not to stand here or over yonder. He will find his quote unquote proper place and he will stay in it. You do not need to send him to the back door. He will go without being told. In fact, if there is no back door, he will cut one for his special benefit, his education makes it necessary, period. Let me tell y'all something. I read that and, and it, it blew my mind. He said, when you control a man's thinking, I want you to hear me, I'm talking to educators this morning. He said, when you control a man's thinking, you do not have to worry about his actions. Do you hear that? We talking black history this morning. We just not doing it the way that, that some other people do it. You know, where they, where, let's talk about Rosa Parks, Harry Tubman, um, 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 Martin Luther King Jr. You know that type of thing, little bio things. Now we 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 gonna look at this thing a little differently today, right? Those are all important people, but we're not doing bios, right? So now once again, he said, when you control a man's thinking, you do not have to worry about his actions. You do not have to tell him not to stand here. Or over there, he said he'll just find his proper place and will stay in it. He said you do not need to send him to the back door because he'll just go without being told. 
And if there is no back door, he'll cut one out and walk through it. See, in other words, he's saying if the education is not an education that truly liberates the mind of the youngster, then you don't have to worry about the youngster. As Dr. Asa Hilliard said, he said that he's self-contained. See, we don't want self-containment. We want that young person to be able to fly. But see, I, why would I talk about this on a VP Academy uh, broadcast? Because this is your role. If they didn't tell you in grad school, if your principal didn't tell you, your superintendent didn't tell you, principal could fail it is telling you this morning that this is your role. This is your responsibility. Because the change you want to see in the world, particularly as it relates to education and closing the various different gaps, etc., it doesn't, those gaps don't close. That change doesn't occur if the mind is not free. See, the mind has to be free. See, when you control a man's thinking, See, the young person has to be exposed to his or her story, right? So so for, for the sake of Kim Wilson Daniel, who's taking notes, question one was why was Carter G, I mean, who was Carter G. Woodson? Number two, why Black History Month? And I went on and answered that. Number three, why the month of February? Number four is where I'm at now. Why aren't we familiar with the multitude of books that detail and chronicle the African-American experience. Let me read that again. You, most of those of you who have been with me for a long time, you know I don't put notes on the screen. I don't need to follow. I don't need to say that again. Why aren't we familiar with the multitude of books that detail and chronicle the African-American experience? Well, the answer is very simple. I can sum it up in one word. The word is called racism. Of course, we can go far, we can expound upon that, but let me give you just the root first, racism. See, see, the books have been written. I wish, I, I wish, I wish you could see every book in my house. You, you, you see two shelves here, but this this thing goes up to the ceiling, right? And then you got more there, then more downstairs. I mean, it's just it's so much. And I post them every day during February, some of them, 28 of them, right? 29 on leap year. But I'm saying to you, the information has been hidden. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me just let me go in depth with that just a second, a little bit. I want to take you back to the period of enslavement. And see, you can enslave a person physically, right? That's 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 the easy part. You can enslave a person physically, but if their mind remains free. And their mind remains using using that word that I use today, optimistic. And that mind remains, I am not content with my with my uh, predicament nor my condition. They're gonna come up with a way to free themselves, or at least they're gonna make the attempt. So, in order to enslave a person, you gotta enslave their mind. Chains on the wrist, chains on the, around the ankles is not gonna do it if their mind is still free. But if you can enslave their mind, then you've got a slave ad infinitum. See, so think about it. It's illegal to teach an enslaved. And you notice I'm using the word enslaved versus slave because I don't want to call the people slaves. They were enslaved. So think about it. During that period, you couldn't even teach a, a black person to read or write without being punished by 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 imprisonment, imprisonment. So now here we are in 2021 because you couldn't teach. So certainly not going to teach them to read and write, but you're not going to teach them their history either. Because if you start teaching them their history, you're going to free the mind. So now we got to make sure that they're not knowledgeable of that past because they will liberate themselves. Well, it's 2021 now, y'all. And those books are still hidden. Go on to your local Barnes and Noble and see if their library could match mine. See if their books, see if their see if their section on black studies can match mine in my house. It can't touch it. See, because so so that is, and, and then the average consumer may think, well, Barnes and Noble, they big time. They got all the books. No, not 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 with that, not with that black experience, they don't. 
that's usually like one little case with all them cases in the stores like one little case in fact barnes and noble won't even carry my books you have to order them from them they will not put them on their shelves you will never go into a barnes and noble and find a book written by baruti kafele although every book i've written is a bestseller in the mainstream i might add right so 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 therefore that information if someone was looking for where where's where's a book on leadership written by a black principal particularly this guy i heard of in social media baruti kafele you ain't gonna find it in barnes and noble but you'll find my white colleagues in barnes and noble but you won't find me in barnes and noble they'll tell you you go down the counter uh, where's principal kafele but he's books are bestsellers oh you have to order that online we don't have, we don't carry that See, it, it hasn't changed. That's what it is. See, so so why aren't those books on those shelves? Racism's still alive and kicking, y'all. Right, but number five, why is black history missing from American history? I'm talking to leaders this morning. Hey, leader, you've been tuning in to me from week one, some of many of you all the way to week 41 today. I'm asking you, why isn't why is black history missing from american history because hear, hear, hear me out on this one there's no such thing as american history if it doesn't incorporate african-american history it doesn't exist african-americans are uniquely american hear how i worded that african-americans are uniquely american what am i saying I'm saying, I got to read y'all comments too. I'm, I'm, I got caught up. Black, uh, what am I saying? I'm saying that when you look at all the different groups in America, there's only one group that came here involuntarily. Everybody else came here by choice. They chose to be here. They may have been leaving an oppression in their own country, but they still chose to come here. The only group in this country that came here involuntarily, that did not choose to be here, is the African American. That's it. I ain't know my aunt was on here. Is the African American. So African Americans are uniquely American. See, we can't jump on the phone and call the family back on the African continent and say, you know, I'm going to be out there in about a week or so to hang with you. I'm coming back home in a month to hang. We, I don't know where my roots are. Ghana, Guinea, Senegal, right? I, 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 I don't know. I can't jump on the phone. I can't send a text. I can't, I can't go to the computer and text something, type to somebody, hey, fam, I'll be back home. In about a, I'll be back home in about a month. We are uniquely American because this is all we know as far as family. We know we got roots in Africa, but, but those who do the research and find them, then fine. I know my oldest son tra traced his. But for the rest of us, this is it. We're uniquely American. We're here involuntarily. So I'm saying to you, black people in America are uniquely American. But we have been written out of those textbooks because you cover slavery. Superficially, I might add, because you cover Frederick Douglass, Booker T. Washington, Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, and then skip all the way to Rosa Parks and Dr. King. That doesn't satisfy me. You have marginalized the story. You have trivialized the story. You, you, you haven't told the story. You've just put a couple of dots here and there. I'm saying to you, leader, you want to lead? And you want to lead in a school where there are Black children? Or you have Black children in your school? and there's an achievement gap in your school, and you're scratching your head, wondering why does this achievement gap exist? Well, let me answer that question for you. Because chances are excellent that that youngster that we're talking about right now has no clue 
as to the greatness and the excellence of his story. And when that youngster is exposed to that story and, and thereby understands his or her place along the continuum of continued struggle, that changes the whole game. But as I articulate that, it makes me think, well, maybe that's why it's not there. See, Because it changes the whole game, but it doesn't change the game just for your black students. It changes the game for your white students. It changes the game for your all your students. But let me let me look at the white students on this one. I can't have white students looking at me or looking at their peers as entertainers and athletes and, and, and solely. See, I need them to see the historical component, the science, the technology, the mathematics the engineering, the architecture, the medicine, right? The, the scholarship, the agriculture, right? And I could keep going, the, 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 the ship building, the navigation. You know, I posted on the, on the thread on Facebook and Twitter this morning, my book of the day, they came before Columbus. We talking about Africans that, 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 that navigated to the Western hemisphere in boats they built, ships they built, they're navigators. 800 BC and left all sorts of evidence of their presence in America. Get the book that's posted right on my page. So, so let's keep going. Number, um, number five, why is black? Oh no, that's the one I read. Number six, why is black history missing from school curriculums? Right. And I, I kind of went into that. So I don't need to go, go much further, but it's not there. When I, when I went to a superintendent back in 2000 and, 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 and sold him, my superintendent, and sold him on infusing African-American history and African history and ancient African history into the curriculum, what we did was revolutionary. And I haven't seen that done in too many places in public schools. You know, maybe for a different broadcast, we'll, we'll kind of go into that. Maybe even this one, I'll, I'll deal with it a little bit. Let me keep going, though. Number uh, seven. What now? This is a big one. What is the correlation between understanding issues of social slash racial justice today and Black history? Let me read that again. And I see my voice is coming back for so that's a good thing, right? What is the correlation between understanding issues of social slash racial justice today and Black history? The correlation. I talked about this during the during the, the, the murder of George Floyd, but I'm going I'm to I'm 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 jump back on it again here. See, you can't understand. You can't comprehend. You can't fathom social, racial justice today if you don't have understanding of the history of African-Americans in this country. It's never going to make complete sense to you if you don't have that historical foundation. I like what they're doing in Buffalo there. See, if you don't have that historical foundation, see, see the, to sit at, to sit at your television set, matter of fact, hit that share button. There are people like shoveling the, 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 the remaining snow that need to be on this broadcast, or there are people watching you know like like the the pre-game talk to the super bowl tomorrow that you know leaders that need to be on this broadcast or watching the same loop on cnn and fox news the same loop just different different talking heads they telling you the same thing what they told you at eight they're telling you again at one they're telling you again at five it's just a different voice it's, so so turn that off tell them they need to be here Right. Because I've never repeated any of, these, any of these in 41 weeks. Right. So here the correlation when when George, so hit that share button, hit that retweet button. When, when George Floyd. Was murdered, when Breonna Taylor was murdered and all the outrage across the country, signs, people with these signs, black lives matter, black lives matter. That's OK. That's a good thing. But. My question in my head 
as I'm watching the people multiracial, and in some of those marches, they were they were predominantly white. I said, but do they know the story? Do they know what got us to this point? Because this is not this is not like new outrage. This is not like recent outrage. This is 400 years of rage that literally culminated into George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. This is 400 years of rage. So leader watching this morning, aspiring leader watching this morning, do you understand that, right? Do you understand that? That this is generational rage, which is ancestral deep. See, generational rage, which is ancestral deep. So it's like, you know, when we talk about ancestral, we're talking about babies born with the rage of their ancestors. So it's, it, it goes back a long way. I'm saying, leader, hear me. If anybody's feeling uncomfortable at this point, just let it ride. Discomfort's not a bad thing, but don't get so upset that you leave, right? If you like me for 40 weeks, like me in week 41. So, so I'm saying to you, leader, that's a part of your responsibility. How you infuse the history of African-American. Not just some bio. The bio is nice. Don't get me wrong. I like reading bios, but you got to go beyond bios. You got to deal with events in history. You got to deal with chronology. You got to deal with timeline, right? So <clears throat> here, those were those seven questions. I got, man, I got so much notes. Let me keep going. So, so the February books of the month, books of the day. If, if you're not following me right now on, 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 on Facebook and, and Twitter, please do. I'm posting, um, I'm posting um, books from my library every day, history books every day. They say, look, here's another one for you to read. And people, they're, they're right on my thread. Like, where can I get it? Stop doing that, y'all. Amazon. <laughs> if, if, if just that's, that's the go-to for everything, right? Go to Amazon, right? Or, or, or research some black vendors on there and get them from them, right? So do it either way. So now, Harlem Renaissance. See, when we talk about book writing, that's not a new phenomenon. Black folks been putting out historical books since since since, since Phyllis Wheatley in 1793, right? And and then and then it just kind of took off in the 1920s with the Harlem Renaissance, which we're in the midst of the hundred year anniversary right now, right? But then you had a second Renaissance of books in the 80s and 90s, the Black Books Movement of the 80s and 90s that went far beyond the Harlem Renaissance because it wasn't just the writing of the books. But Black folks now, yeah, in Source of Knowledge in Newark, thank you, Nicole. Those of you in Jersey, we're waiting for Source of Knowledge to get that website up, which is why I haven't been pushing them because they'll be inundated. But, but certainly Source of Knowledge for the Jersey folks right here in Newark, New Jersey, it's got your books, right? So. But but there was a second movement that you guys need to know about to 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 just disseminate black literature, which was in the 80s and the 90s. So so but where 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 it picked up from the um the Harlem Renaissance, where it kind of built upon it, it wasn't just writers. It was a plethora of black off uh, black publishers. It was it was a plethora of black wholesalers, black distributors, right? Black retailers, the stores. Right. And the vendors in various different cities. So now you had we, we had a network. And, and I might even add there was one black printer that I know of. So 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 in the black books industry, which I was which I was a part of because I was self-published at that time. There was no need to rely on the mainstream to get our, our literature out there because the mainstream wasn't going to do it. You know, the mainstream, like like these back in those days, I had written four self-published books. The mainstream wasn't going to touch my books. But Essence magazine, which is a black women's magazine, designated my first book, a black parents handbook, their number one bestseller nonfiction. Imagine that the mainstream wouldn't touch it. But Essence said, but it's number one on set and it's based on sales. So I'm saying to you. There, there were two renaissances and, 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 and the second one, it had not only the author, but the publisher, the printer, 
the, the retailer, the distributor, the wholesaler, it, 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 it had everything, the promoters, it had everything. And then came this thing called the internet. And it then the whole thing collapsed like a house of cards. Over a thousand retailers across the country, every major city, black owned bookstores selling black literature that you will not find in Barnes and Noble. You won't even find these on Amazon. They didn't exist, but you still won't, right? It just collapsed because people stopped going to the stores and the stores couldn't support themselves. I'm gonna get to them black newspapers, um, Rodrich, that's, that's in my notes, right? So we have to, we, we, so, so as a leader, the information's out there, but you gotta listen to people like myself that are sharing this information, right? You gotta, you gotta be in tune with people like myself who are sharing this information. Let's keep it moving. Um, I got a lot in these notes, what time, oh my God. Listen, y'all, the month of January, hey, leaders out there, the month of January is like my king month. I don't just look at the king holiday as the king holiday on whatever Monday it is and his birthday. I read king every year. If I'm not reading king, I'm listening to king. I'm watching king. But I, but I, but I just go in deep as it relates to Dr. King. So this year, in, in the month of January, I read two king books. And, and, and we're talking about things I've read over the years, just read them over and over. There's an autobiography of Dr. King that he didn't actually write. It's his writings, and it was compiled into a book. But then his last book, where do we go from where, where do we go from here? Chaos or Community. I decided to reread that. And I found something in there as because I'm reading it through a different lens when I've read it. Because I'm because I'm because I do this, this, this um ses these sessions on Saturday. So as I was reading it. I stumbled on something that I, I I had to type into my notes and I want to share it with you. It's somewhere around. If you know that, if you have that book, where do we go from here? It's somewhere around page. It's, it's on page 43 and 45, 43 through 45. And Dr. King, I want to quote him here. Let me just read this to you. He said, um, he said, um, if he said the tendency to ignore and let me use the word Negro because that's what he used at that time. This was 1967 when he wrote this. He wrote it in Jamaica right before his assassination in 1968. He said, the tendency to ignore the Negro's contribution to American life and strip him of his personhood is, an, is as old as the earliest history books and as contemporary as this morning's newspaper. He said to offset this cultural homicide, is Dr. King now. He said to offset this cultural homicide, the Negro must rise up with an affirmation of his own Olympian manhood. Any movement for the Negro's freedom that overlooks this necessity is only waiting to be buried. As long as the mind is enslaved, the body can never be free. See, that's why you got to stop watching solely I Have a Dream. Because there's so much more to Dr. King. Like, <clears throat> I put this last quote here. Which, which now, now take, take a listen to this one. He said, I wept for my children and, the, and all black children who have been denied a knowledge of their heritage. See, we y'all ain't used to hearing that from Dr. King. You used to, I have a dream speech and my and the Montgomery bus boycott and, and Birmingham and so forth, which is all important, but you're not necessarily used to these words. I'm going to read that sentence again and keep it moving. I wept for my children, wept, W-E-P-T, so cry, for my children and all black children who have been denied a knowledge of their heritage. I wept for all white children who through daily miseducation, yeah, he used that word, are taught that the Negro is, irrele is an irrelevant entity in American society. You know, Dr. King said that, did you? I wept for all the white parents and teachers who are forced to overlook the fact that the wealth of cultural and technological progress in America is a result of the commonwealth of inpouring contributions, meaning he's talking about African-Americans. So here you got Dr. King talking about the problem of curriculum. See, we, 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 we don't always associate that with Dr. King. Let me grab this book out here because y'all need to get this one right here. Where do we go from here? Chaos or community? See, we, see, see, we, 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 we tend to know, think about Dr. King with civil rights, right? 
and and and, and his various speeches and, and and campaigns and movement, and then the assassination on April 4, 1968. But but what we what we don't necessarily hear is his position as it related to school curriculum relative to black children, right? See, that's why you gotta read, folks. That's why you gotta hit that share button. That's why you gotta hit that retweet button. That's why you gotta let people know each one teach one. Let me keep it going. So I wrote a question on here to kind of just remind myself, what do I know about the African people before the period of enslavement? Cause see, I'm, 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 I'll I'm, tell you. Let me just say, let me just deal with that and tell you where I'm going with this. What a hey, leader! This is self-reflective for you. What do you know about black people? And when I say you, I'm saying you, because because you're 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 a facilitator in your school. What what do you know about black people prior to the period of enslavement? What do you know? So as I just as I just delineated about ten minutes ago, what do you know relative to the African contributions? To the world in the in the areas of science and technology, right? Mathematics, uh, engineering, building, architecture, design, astronomy, and astrology. What 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 do you know, right? Medicine, agriculture, scholarship, education, writing, various inventions of tools or so ingenuity. What what do you know? versus the stereotypes that have been fed. What what do you know? See that 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 matters. Because when we start start um delving into African American history, you got to know African history. Because I'm because I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this to you. I'm going to get closer to the camera on this one though. If you start off teaching these children any children black history starting with slavery, enslavement, you've done them a disservice. Let me say that to you again. I'm looking right into this camera right now. If you start off teaching black history with an introduction to enslavement, and that becomes the, the, the beginning of them learning their story, you have done the children a disservice, which could psychologically mentally, emotionally damage them, not only in real time, but for the rest of their lives. You have to start them off during the, during the periods in the world when they, were, when, when, when they were on top, not when they were enslaved. To start them off in slavery means you are starting them off on the lowest point in history for Black people. A period of not just enslavement, but a period of dehumanization. You cannot start there. I would never start there. Hear that. That may be the most significant thing I said today. So now let me tell you where I'm going. It's 11.53. I have 50 questions. 50. 50. And I'm not going to cover all 50. I'm going to cover just a handful with these few minutes that I have left. And then next week. I don't have to do all the preliminary work. We can just dive right in and go right to it. So I got these 50 self-reflective questions that I specifically designed for school leaders as it relates to leading your school. And <clears throat> let me just give you, let me, let me just see if I can at least get three or four in before it's 12 o'clock or a few minutes after. And we're going to go all the way from one to 50. And, I, and, and hopefully I'll get all 50 in next, by next week. And if not, then um, we'll go into part three. But I just want you to ride with me because the information is so, so important. So number one, those, those first seven, they were a, a, a separate one to seven. Now this is the new one to 50. So, And I'm saying that to Kim Wilson, Daniel, because I don't want to be confusing. Number one, what do I know about the circumstances upon which the first Africans arrived to America? Right? And I'm not going to give a whole lot of commentary to these because then I'm doing history lessons. And I don't think that that's what you guys want in terms of a, a, vir a virtual AP Leadership Academy. I'm just going to give summaries. But again, what do I know about the circumstances upon which the first Africans arrived to America? See, what, what, what do I know about that? Right. What do I know about what was entailed? Right. What do I know about the why? And what do I know about how they came, such as 
coming here as indentured servants, not as slaves, right? So coming here as indentured servants uh, under a contract. But what do I know about prior to that in terms of the usage of the Native American, right? And, 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 and the challenges with that and thereby venturing off to the African continent and, and, and calling themselves correcting those challenges in terms of disease and dying off of the Native Americans and the Native Americans fighting back, et cetera. What do I know about those circumstances? And then going to, an, to the African continent and finding all, all this labor and then the capture. You know, people like to say the sale, no, no, the capture of millions of people. The capture of millions, plural, that did not make it to the American shores because they died midstream in the Middle Passage and therefore, thereby were tossed overboard in the Atlantic. The, the Atlantic Ocean is, you know, I, I go on Caribbean cruises, right? But when, before you get to the Caribbean, when, well, just being in the Caribbean Sea, but also being in the Atlantic as you're going down the, the, um, the, 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 uh, the, down the East Coast line, um, it's, it's hard for me to look at that ocean. I look at it, but it's hard. Because I know that, that that Atlantic Ocean is a graveyard. That's what it is. It's a it's a graveyard, particularly from England to from 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 from, um, from Europe all the way to to America and the Caribbean. It's and, and when I traveled to England last year, two year two years ago, it, just looking out the window, you know, it was it was tough because it's it's just a big expansive graveyard of millions. Some estimates between ten to twenty million of African lives that were lost through that what's called the middle passage, which I'm really not there yet, right? I'm, I'm, just, on, I'm just on, what do, what do I know about the circumstances? So as leader, I'm not saying that you need to know this to upset your students, to create friction in your school, any of that, but I'm saying if we're gonna talk about American history, then we have to tell the truth about American history. We can't, we can't shy away from that which seems, oh, this is a little bit too sensitive. Then we're not then we're not talking about American history. We're just talking about the parts that that that, that the part that the people that we want to shine, that they will shine. Right. But we're not talking about the, the sins, the ills of American history. We have to we have we have to have the audacity. That's that word of the day today. We have the have to have the audacity to tell the, the, the true story, even when it hurts, even when it hurts our soul. We have to have the courage, the spine, the backbone, the audacity to tell the truth of American history. That's all. Because that's what it is. So number two, what year and location did the first Africans arrive? So when, we, so when you hear that, that, that project that everybody seems to be up in arms about, the 1619 project, some, some people don't really realize what that 1619 means. That 1619 is the, is, the, is, the, is the year of the arrival of the first Africans to the, to the shores of America in, in James, Jamestown, Virginia. And you have to understand that. You got to understand the historical significance of 1619 and Jamestown, Virginia. So when, when you hear the outrage about, about the 1619 project, which is ridiculous, read the project. Don't, don't, don't listen to the media and, and, and they're saying this, this shouldn't be a part of the schools and you know governments and all this banning uh, or, or keeping districts from receiving funding because they incorporate the, the 1619 project. I'm saying to you, don't listen to the headlines. Don't read the headlines. Read the project. Just go online and read the project. See what it says. Because, see, you got people out here in the world that don't want that history told because it's a brutal history. And let me tell you something. If you sit and watch Roots and you get upset, fine. But understand Roots is like a picnic compared to what it really was. That's all. It, Roots, Roots is like going to the amusement park in comparison to what that experience really was, which the African-American community, make no mistake about it, has not recovered from it yet. Because you know, anytime you go through trauma, because that's what it is, it's collective trauma. Well, any trauma at some point, need, at some point requires therapy. You need therapy. You need a, you, you, you need a therapeutic transformation to, to, to emerge out of that traumatic experience. Well, guess what? The African-American community never got that therapy. It's just been oppression upon oppression upon oppression upon oppression. We're still dealing with it. Children are born into it. And then we have to talk to our children about it throughout their childhood. We have to talk about it we have, because we have to get them ready 
to go out and do battle because it's real. So I'm saying to you as leader, you have to have the spine to make this a part of your school. There's nobody on this thread that knows me from here in Jersey that, that, that could say to me, you didn't do that because that's it wouldn't be true. I did it. I felt obligated. I felt compelled that I have to make this a part of what we do. Number um number three, I think I'm gonna stop at three. What do I know about black participation in the Revolutionary War? Hmm. What do I know about black participation in the Revolutionary War? Wow. When I was coming up in grade school, that was like an irrelevant topic for me. They're talking about the Revolutionary War. We're the black soldiers. Nobody had, they didn't tell me anybody black fought in that war. But then when I became an independent reader, a voracious reader, I said, wow. Wow, five to nine thousand black men fought in the in the Revolutionary War. So therefore, black men fought for America's independence, which included Crispus Attucks was the first life in seven in, on March fifth, seventeen seventy. The first person to die for America's independence happened to be black by the name of Crispus Attucks. But then the war itself, five to nine thousand troops were black. On the on the on the continental side, and then on the British side, over twenty thousand black men fighting on the British side. So you have black men fighting on both sides because both sides were promised their their their, their freedom at the end of the war. Well, that was a lie that was told on both sides. Of course, we all know that there were free Africans, free black people throughout history. They were free, but they weren't citizens which we'll talk about when I get to Dred Scott late next week. But but we're talking about the bulk of those soldiers that fought in the American Revolution who fought to free, to, 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 to give America its independence from Britain, went back into slavery. So when the Declaration of Independence is written and when the Constitution, it's in 1776 and the, and the Constitution in 1787, black folks remain enslaved for another 87 years. But we don't tell that story. We don't tell that story. Hey, leader, you have to have the audacity to tell the truth. Let me give you one more and then we'll, we'll pick up on number five next week. Number four is what do I know about the middle passage? Oh, man. What do I know about it? Man, I mean, there's so much to say. Another word for it, an African word is the the, the mafa, the uh, M-A-A-F-A, -A -A, mafa. And the middle passage, you know, it's... It, it, Going back to when 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 the trade first, but when 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 the middle passage first began, you know, it's different different quality of ships, so it could take up to three months. But as shipbuilding improved over the years, then it take anywhere from say forty five for around forty five days, a month and a half, right? But think about it, for, whether it be forty five whether it be forty five days or three months, just think about just one day being packed in the bottom of a ship with about four hundred other people, where the ceiling is about five feet above you, so you can't even stand. You can't get up to go to the bathroom. You can't get up to get air. You just you just lay in there. You get, somebody next to you is sick or defecates or urinates. You can't do anything about it. So so now disease it emerges on the ship, in 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 the holes of the slave ship, and now and and now large percentages of them die, lose their lives. Well, they're not going to keep them down there. Now they take them and throw them overboard, and the sharks eat them. Right. So there's there, there's so much to say there. But that's part of the reality. I mean, that's that's that that is the reality of, of of in terms of the history of African Americans in terms of how they got here. So so families split up. Just think about you, real quick. Just think about you and I. And I, and I know I'm not necessarily sharing anything new, but I'm but I want to reinforce. So just think about you with your family. You in the living room chilling. You you home chilling with your family or people that you love most on the planet, and then. Your, 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 your child gets sold, right? Your spouse gets sold and you can't do anything about it or your family is on the same ship. But as a man, you can't protect your family, right? Or you watch your wife die, right? Or your children or whomever and you can't do anything about it. And now you come into this new country and immediately you are stripped and put on an auction block and you are sold and, and 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 you and you don't see your family anymore. You don't know where they are. 
In fact, you don't even speak the language of the people who are selling you, who own you, who have stripped you of your humanity. You don't even speak the language, so you don't even know what they're saying. Because there wasn't nobody speaking English from those countries. So you don't know what they're saying. That's American history, y'all. I know it hurts. Listen, I'm going to say it one more time, then we're going to close out, then we're going to come back. We're going to get a little heavier next week. Listen, I just spent my time, I just spent the hour talking about American history. It's what it is. So when, when, when people get upset about the 1619 project, then they upset about American history. See, so it's like what they're what here's what they're saying. I don't want to hear that part of our history. I want to hear about patriots, right? Whatever that, whatever that means. I want to hear about patriots. I don't, I don't want to hear nothing about enslaving nobody. I don't want to hear nothing about raping nobody. I don't want to hear nothing about hanging nobody. I don't want to hear nothing about killing nobody. I don't want to hear nothing about separating anybody. I don't want to hear nothing about branding anybody. I don't want to hear nothing about whipping nobody. I, or, or I just want to hear about patriots. A patriot's a flag. Um, 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 uh, uh, my marches with a little drummer, a little drum, you know, all that kind of stuff. I don't, but but that stuff you're talking about right now, I don't want to hear that. In fact, in fact, Kefele, I've been with you for 40 weeks, but this stuff here, I don't want to hear this. Let me know when you get back to this book, right? See, see, and, and, and that's and that's you know, that's where it's at. I'm saying to us, if we're talking about Black History Month then we got to be truthful about the story. Now, again, I don't want to start here. I'm a, I want to start in Africa, but I'm going to make my way here because, because see the African component, that's not African-American history now, that's African history. The African-American history is once we get to Jamestown, see? So there's a truth there that has to be dealt with because I need, I'm, I'm going to close on this note. I need that black child to hear that story and say, oh no. I need that black child to watch that, that video, right? So you got this video with some guys walking around with guns, some, some woman twerking, you know, or, 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 or whatever, right? Some, some ignorant mess, right? And, and, and I want that youngster to pull, let me, where's my message here? To pull the miseducation of the matter of fact, let, let's go, let's go in a different direction. I want that youngster to pull out his autobiography of Malcolm X, right? And he or she is reading it. And let me put the book up and reading it and reading it. Oh, reading it. Oh, reading it. Oh, oh. And I was watching some twerk video. And I was watching some 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 joker with with like stacks of dollars against his ear or his forehead whatever that is i don't pay a lot of attention to it and i and i was i was i was excited about that or some lyric about how i'm going to pop somebody and i was excited about that but then i read the autobiography of malcolm x or where we where do we go from here by king Oh, oh, I've been deprived. I didn't know this. Oh, see, that's, that's what happens. And that's why I want to expose that youngster. That's why you got to expose that youngster. Because that youngster has to wake up to what Carter G. Woodson was saying with that quote I read you, when you control a man's thinking. If you could put enough video in front of him and put enough women scantily clad twerking their behinds or some, some dude walking around with guns talking about who he gonna kill next, and it's usually somebody else black, right? So, 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 we, so we inundate him and her with that kind of imagery of what it is to be black and don't counter it with a with, with with history and information and research that makes him feel proud of who he is and what he is and thereby not miseducated but told the truth about his story that's going to be a different young man that's going to be a different young woman but see leader 
You got to have the backbone. You got to have the spine to bring that into your school. Superintendent, because because principal might say it's the superintendent. All right, we got some superintendents on here right now. I know that. Hey, Doc. Hey, board member. All I'm asking is that your children learn the truth about themselves. I'm not asking no rocket science stuff here. I'm just requesting that the children be exposed to the story of themselves. You want to close the achievement gap? Well, let me tell you how you're not going to do it. By you investing in that million dollar or that that multi that that thousands of dollar reading model that somebody some slick talking salesperson came to your office and sold you on or that or or or, or that, that 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 exorbitantly priced math model that some slick sales team came to your office conference room and told you about and said that this is going to raise your test scores let me tell you something they lied they they just trying to get the commission that's all that is because that's not what's going to raise the test scores by this little newfangled writing program are you kidding me do you really think that there's a new way to write do you really think that there's a new way to do mathematics do you really think that there's a new way to teach reading? It's 2021 and you think someone just actually invented something new that's going, that black children are now going to miraculously know how to read and write and do math? Are you kidding me? You just had some slick salespeople that understood how to forge relationship with you and say the right things and push the right buttons and bam. You bought the program and now you are disseminating it across the district. And then you get your test scores and you find out you ain't you ain't get five, 10 points extra on your assessment. You still got a gap. You know why? Because that is not the problem. Those children are brilliant. I know I'm on that soapbox right now. Just hang with me for a minute. Those children are brilliant. They're special. They're extraordinary. Their problem is not that they can't read. Their problem is not that they can't write. Their problem is not that they can't compute. Their problem is that when they look into the mirror, they do not recognize who that is looking back at them historically speaking. That is the problem. And when those young people, we're talking about your black children right now, when, when, when the day comes that they can look into their mirror, and they recognize the greatness historically. Looking back at them in their mirror, that's the day when the game is over. How do I know that? Because I'm not talking theory. I had a superintendent that said, go for it. I did it. I watched it. I watched them stand up straight. I watched their pants come up. I watched their shoulders back. I watched their heads up. I watched their chest out, walking with pride down the hall because they were exposed to the truth of American history. Hey, y'all. Next week, we're going to start on number five, and I'm going to see if I could take that to 50. But some of y'all sitting there now saying, Man, we know you. You can't even take one to eight to an hour. So how are you going to take one to 50? <laughs> I know. Y'all just rock with me. Whatever whatever it takes, right? Whatever it takes. Let me give you this assignment real quick, man. Let me close this out. I got so many pages. I got to find the page here. Let me let me close this out. Here we go. Parting question. Am, am, am I satisfied with what I know regarding the history of Black people in America? If not, what will I do to enhance my knowledge base? Once again, and I'm sorry, y'all, I didn't put all y'all comments up today. I, I guess I, so, I, was, I was focused, y'all. I, I didn't see the comments. I'm going to read them right after I hit this, this end button. I'm going to sit here for about two hours reading everything you guys said. Am I satisfied with what I know regarding the history of Black people in America? If not, what will I do to enhance my knowledge base? Right. So 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 do 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 that and um, work on that question and be ready for us next week. Once again, these are still the, the books for this this course, this academy. I'm just not using them for for February. Right. But these are this is what we use. So get your copies. Right. Get them both and then subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
Virtual AP Leadership Academy. Subscribe to my Facebook page, Virtual AP Leadership Academy. I should say like and follow my Facebook page, Virtual AP Leadership Academy. Wear your mask so we can get this, this, this bloody virus behind us, this deadly virus behind us. Wear your mask. If you got to double up, double up, but wear your mask. If you one of them folks is watching me right now and you one of them, you know, one of them ones is just defiant. Like I ain't wearing mine. I ain't wearing mine. I ain't wearing, I ain't wearing my mask, man. I'm constitutional rights. I ain't wearing my mask. Look, put your mask on, right? So we can get this thing behind us. So we can get these young people back in school. I don't care about your politics. I don't care which who you follow, who you like, who you loyal to, and all that stuff. Just put the daggone mask on so that we can get this thing and stay six feet apart. This ain't party time. This ain't the time to be in little close, confined spaces, and now y'all in there spitting on each other. This ain't the time for that. We're in a pandemic. We're looking at, we're, we're, we're approaching 500,000 deaths in this country alone, the United States of America, and you need to be at some bar sitting in a bar on a bar stool, spitting at each other? You really need that right now? Are you serious in these times of crisis? Do you, are you serious? Put on the mask, keep your butt in the house. You don't need a Super Bowl party outside somewhere. Have your, I'm gonna have a party of one in my living room and I'm gonna be content with that. That's how we do that, y'all. I don't mean to come hard, but somebody gotta do it. President can't talk like this. I could, but I can, right? So put the mask on. Take care of your, your body, your diet, get that exercise in. And then I see you guys. I see you guys next week, man. I see you next Saturday at 11. If I made anybody feel uncomfortable today, then I met my objective. That was the goal, right? But I hope I hope nobody got so uncomfortable that they won't come back, right? I want you to come back. But if I if I made anybody uncomfortable, if I created any tension, if I created any uneasiness, then I met my goal. Because if you go to principalcafele.com, the first thing you will see on my website, principalcafele.com, America's discomfort speaker. I'm in the business of discomfort. I am not in the business of motivation. I will leave that to other people. I am in the business of discomfort. So if I was able to create that, then I've done my job. But I appreciate you guys. You have a great week. Have an extraordinary week. Have your best week yet. Peace. Peace. Thumbs up. Cock that fist back. One, two, three. Bam. I'll see you next Saturday, 11 o'clock Eastern. Tell your friends and family. Check out the video on YouTube. It's up now. Watch this video on YouTube and or, or watch it on Facebook or Twitter. But just tell the folks. If they didn't catch me live, catch the rewind. Have a great week.